The views and opinions of this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers. There is substantial risk of loss in trading futures and options, which you should carefully consider prior to trading. Make sure to subscribe to the Market Talk YouTube channel. You can watch our latest interviews with top market analysts in the country, find bonus content, and much more. It's easy. Just go to youtube.com slash at Market Talk Egg and hit the subscribe button. Or you can search for Market Talk Egg on YouTube. Well, as we continue to recap the January USDA reports that came out on Friday, there was a lot of data there. We'll call it a data dump from USDA. And I would say a lot of it was fairly bearish to the markets. We're going to get some perspective on that, though, see if I'm completely right or not. We're going to talk markets right now. Joining us, Kent Beadle with Paradigm Futures is back with us on the program. And Kent, Always good to have a conversation with you, sir. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on, Jesse. Appreciate it. Well, yeah, and we appreciate the time uh, recapping these uh, USDA reports for January. And as I said, it's largely a, a data dump, Kent. There's so much that comes out from USDA in January. It's always known for surprises and volatility in the markets. And yep. largely it felt like the reports Friday were pretty bearish to the markets. What's your initial reaction to what USDA gave us on Friday? Yeah, well, they they first of all gave us production and that absolutely was higher than anticipated. Um, yield particularly, yield jumped uh, really good, uh, 177.3 bushels an acre for corn, uh, which was up uh, 2.4 bushels from the previous estimate. Um, it is a record and uh, you know, uh, but I'm not overly surprised, I guess, by that. Um, it does run outside of the bounds of the typical kind of change you get in January relative to changes we've had in uh, October and November, which were actually quite small. So uh, this was a little, uh, a little better, but you know, we have a lot of clients in Iowa and Illinois, and they had some pretty good yields in some areas. Uh, they had some rough yields in other areas, but um, I guess I was leaning if we were going to have a surprise that the yield might be a little bit better. And of course, that that uh, carried over to soybeans as well. Um, you know, seven tenths of a bushel higher there on a percentage basis. Uh, you know, uh, really quite similar. Um, now that What's interesting is the the that production, that additional production, kind of flowed into those quarterly grain stocks, and mm -hmm. uh, you know the grain stocks relative to trade expectations. If you just added the increase in production to those uh, previous guesses, what you find is that there just wasn't really any uh, any major shift. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. it's not a major shift at all. And so um, uh, a disappearance, that first quarter disappearance was very much in line with trade expectations and really didn't have any um, any bearing on market action. You know, essentially we traded, uh, you know, slightly higher carryout numbers. Um, I do think that it's, uh, you know, interesting on the demand side of corn specifically that uh, for us to, um, uh, be able to uh, only raise uh, ending stocks by, yeah, I think, you know, 30, uh, 30 some million bushels mm -hmm. because we had an increase in, um, we had an increase in the ethanol grind by 50 million. We had an increase in feed residual usage. And so, you know, your ending stocks number uh, really not all that different. Um, you know, there were a few other uh, items of note. Uh, you know, Brazilian uh, production was lowered, but uh, the USDA is being very conservative about lowering Brazilian production right now. Um, they were on the books at 129 million tons. They lowered by 2 million tons that production estimate down to 127. Uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the Brazilian government actually has an estimate right now at 117 million tons. Now, a good portion of that production is still to be planted, the safrina crop. And so that's probably why the USDA is being so um, uh, conservative. 
Uh, but mm -hmm. most boots on the ground, um, you know, believe two things. Number one, that uh, planted acreage for safrina corn is going to be down uh, and that yield is going to be down um, both, uh, you know, due to the lateness of some of the acreage in Brazil relative to late planting and then replant. That's just a, uh, um, it's just likely to be lower because uh, a bunch of their production is going to stretch into some adverse weather periods and then the yeah. the, the um uh the uh excuse me the uh, brazilian bean crop lowered uh, to 57 million tons one 157 million excuse me um you know that's down two but again uh, brazilian government at 155 many private estimates are at 150 151 there's mm -hmm. probably a lot of room for lower production uh, going forward um, you know, the Argentine estimates uh, actually a little bit higher, and uh, we all know the weather has been good there. I would note that there was one thing that we thought we, they might do, and we thought they might go back here uh, eight months and lower uh, the, the size of last year's Argentine soybean crop. Um, it was, uh, it is still on the books at 25 million tons by the USDA. Uh, just this week, the attache uh, from the USDA to Argentina actually um, had the crop at 21 million tons, lowered it to 20 and a half. Um, I think there's plenty of evidence that those are bushels on the balance sheet that really honestly are not there. Well, Kent, uh, thank you for breaking down the numbers for us. And uh, as we look at all of this, and you made some great points there, and I, I look at you know how futures reacted on the day Friday in the U.S. Sure. And I guess let's let's just talk risk management wise here. And you, you know we see corded soybeans especially break. We're pretty cheap here. You know what's it going to take to maybe spur some demand possibly get some funds back in buying this market i guess what are mm -hmm. your thoughts what do, what do folks need to keep in mind risk management wise here watching these markets take a tumble into a three-day holiday weekend ken yeah well um so you know old crop you know we we, we typically have some sort of a post-harvest low seasonal rally um, this is clearly a, a, a late low, and um, this is probably one of the worst starts to a new year that we've had in, in addition. Um, so, you know, it, it may be a challenge to get that rally that we're looking for to do some old crop marketing. Um, but I, you know, would just mention that, you know, our, our year to date exports, um, in corn, for example, obviously they're quite a bit ahead of a year ago, and they're very much in line with the USDA um, uh, estimates in terms of what we've exported to date and what we have on the books for sales. Um, even with the soybeans, uh, you know, the the USDA estimate for bean exports is is absolutely lower, and it's going to be lower this year. But the pace of sales to date, plus the shipments that we've made, uh, that's absolutely in line we've sold 78 percent of of the uh, usda projection that's exactly where we should be mm -hmm. um and if we get a little bit cheaper here and that and we certainly have um you know we're still talking about you know a month or two before there's a lot of brazilian supply that's going to be on the marketplace and we might be able to get a little bit more of that i do think that some of our issue, um, just as of the last two weeks, has been shipping issues, okay? Yep. Um, I mean, there's no doubt ocean freight has spiked higher, and that's put us at a little bit of a disadvantage. You know, we're probably loading all that we can off the West Coast, which is our, you know, our cheap, uh, cheapest export point right now. Uh, and going off the Gulf is problematic because we're having a hard time getting through the Panama Canal and uh, and going through the Suez now is is problematic as well, and so you have these long trips around uh, the, the the tips of the southern hemisphere, and that's just very expensive. Um, that's hurt us. Uh, we'd certainly like to see that resolve itself, and if it does, with these lower prices that we have, I just wouldn't be at all surprised to see uh, uh, you know a, a nice pickup in 
in exports in, in both corn and beans, quite frankly. Well, I know that th all of this data and uh, where the markets sit now and all those issues you mentioned with shipping, et cetera, uh, there's going to be a lot of um, a lot of tough decisions, I would say, amongst producers yeah. here as we go through the next couple of weeks, especially if, if you got to move grain that's sitting on the farm to pay for inputs coming up for this 24 planting season. I mean, there's... Right. There's a lot of things that are a lot of hard conversations that are going to have to be had here in the next few weeks, Ken. Well, so a couple of things, you know, we may see. Um, this is likely to, to choke off some flow from the country at this point in time. Uh, so you should be watching for local basis levels and our basis levels getting any better. Uh, and then at that point, if you make some sales against some better basis levels, but with you know, relatively for poor futures prices, you could, you know, um, enter into some, you know, lower risk uh, or or uh, or even long future strategies. Uh, but, you know, call spreads, call spreads with short puts uh, or just long calls in order to reown some of the bushels that you're selling at good basis, but lower futures prices. Um, I think that the other piece of the risk management that you're talking about is going to go to, you know, next year's planning, right? And I think this is going to become a market focus uh, very soon because um, with this uh, drop this week in futures prices and really at the end of last week too, uh, we've taken December corn underneath $5 and now we're sitting around $4.80 plus or minus. If you tack on a normal harvest basis nationwide, um, harvest basis nationwide is generally in the 30 under to 40 under area on an average U.S. basis. You've essentially put um, U.S. Uh, the average U.S. price of new crop corn to the grower at about four dollars and forty cents. And you know the math that I've been doing with break evens around the country suggests that that's probably about break even for the U.S. farmer. Now, there are more efficient producers who own their land who can probably produce corn for $4 or a little less. Mm -hmm. uh, if you rent land, you are producing corn for somewhere closer to $5 or a little bit more. And 40% of the acres in this country are rented. So if you do the math on all of that, 440 is a pretty good break even. Um, in my opinion, and you know, we're essentially right there with today's price action. So, you know, the question is, how many acres of corn are we going to plant? How many acres of corn are we going to fertilize for maximum yield? Right? Uh, these are the questions that the marketplace is going to deal with going forward. Um, how many acres of, of soybeans do we need, or are we going to plant at uh, at eleven dollars and you know, 80 cents or, or thereabouts, mm -hmm. um, that math doesn't work particularly good either. And when this has happened in the past, um, you know, you've seen certain certain things start to happen. You know, you you see a few acres uh, continue to, sh to shrink up. Again, you see less input costs being uh, uh, expended on the crop because you've got to tighten the belts up. And um, ultimately, these things can have some impact on uh, uh, on production longer term. You know, ultimately, we've still got weather to trade, you know, both uh, for the safrina crop in South America and for the U.S. crop this spring, as well as uh, the acreage uh, conversation that we're talking about. And we have a, a very long history of being able to uh, to rally at least sometime in the winter and spring, um, you know, through midsummer until the crop is made, uh, at least above uh, the high levels made here in the month of January. And in fact, that statistic is, uh, you know, uh, 32 of the last 34 years in corn and, uh, mm -hmm. and like 33 of the last 34 years in soybeans. So, um, you know things are don't look great right now uh but from a you know risk management standpoint uh certainly you want to be will willing and ready to sell rallies but uh, i'm not sure you want to sell uh new crop uh, grain in the hole here after this report because uh the truth is is that 
you know, the, the balance sheets are, are, are not tight, but they are also aren't um, overly burdensome uh, historically. Kent, uh, really appreciate the thoughts and the analysis of the USDA reports here today. If folks have questions for you, they want to take a hard look at their marketing plans and more, I know they can contact you there at Paradigm Futures. What's the right. best way to reach you, Kent? Yeah, uh, you know, uh, Kent at ParadigmFutures.net is, uh, is my email address. Um, I'm also available on the phone at 651-491-2119. If somebody is interested and wants uh, uh, wants to chat about uh, what's going on out there today. And they can find more at ParadigmFutures.net as well. Kent Beadle with Paradigm Futures. Always appreciate a conversation, sir. Thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you again soon.